As you're driving up U.S. Highway 41 in Gibson County, you probably wonder, what do they make in that odd-shaped building? Well, they make gears, but they do it with just amazing technology. HMC Gears, we're going to take a look today. Come on in. Here at HMC Gears, I'm here with Henry Smith. This, you're fifth generation of this company. Tell us a little bit about the company and what you do. Okay, the company started in the late 1800s. Uh, we were a mining company. Uh, we had a first mine in Princeton, Indiana. Uh, that mine ran for a few years, and then it, there was a flood. And we actually started another mine out on the south side of Princeton, which was known as King's Mine. King's Mine was started in 1919, and it employed approximately 500 people, and it ran for approximately 50 years. Uh, HMC was started in 1921. HMC was started to actually be a service shop for the mine. And with the fact that we had purchased several acres with the uh, prospect of having a mine, we ended up with tens of thousands of acres, and we got into the farming business. Um, our farming business was known as Princeton Farms. And so that was the connection to Orville Redenbacher, because yes. everybody's going to ask about what's yes. the connection to Orville Redenbacher. Right. He worked in the 40s and 50s for Princeton Farms. Yes, he worked, uh, he started in 1939. My great-grandfather, Henry, hired him to uh, manage his farm here at Princeton Farms. And uh, prior to that, he was a county extension agent in Terre Haute. <laughs> That's pretty amazing a story in itself. So you started as a, really as a, as a side business to support your mining industry. Right. You're in mining, so tell us a little bit about mining, because when we think of mining, we typically just think of coal. There's right. other kinds of mining uh, sectors within the mining industry that you sure. support. Uh, phosphate, potash, uh, taconite, silver, gold, uh, pretty much any mining process that's out there, including the processing of that product. And so, so not just mining, though, you, you service other kinds of industries, in particular industries that need these right. kinds of gears. Right. Tell us a little bit about some of those industries as well. Okay, the, the sugar industry is uh, an industry that uses very large gears. Uh, aluminum, steel, uh, power generation, uh, defense, marine. So power generation, not just for power plants, but also for windmills and things of that nature, the large gears that turn the, turn the windmills. Yeah. Primarily, primarily fossil fuel plants, but yes, wind towers also use large gears. And so your scope, you it's not just Southwest Indiana, it's not just the United States, you're a global company? That's correct. Uh, we service South, Central, America, North America, obviously, Canada, South Africa, and Australia. And you're, so you will be manufacturing these products here and then shipping them all around the world? That's correct, yes. Uh, and in particular, if you're servicing something, then you'll, see, you'll send a team from here to wherever you're, you're placing the product around the world? Right, we manufacture the product here, and then when our product's being installed, we send engineers on site to actually oversee the installation of our product. Describe a little bit about the machine that we're looking at right here. Okay, this is a five-axis machining center. <clears throat> it has hobbing, it has internal and external gear cutting capabilities. It'll cut gears up to four and a half meters, internal and external. It's so you're bringing this, this will be a forged part that you're bringing in, and you're doing all the value added machining for this. Right. And this particular part would be for what application? What's this What's this part going to? This is going to go on a ball mill. A and ball, a ball mill. mill can be used for a number of different things. It's for uh, blending different products, for grinding products to a certain size. Um, so that could be from mining to sugar production. It just depends on what you're looking for. It could be mining, it could be sugar, it could be building products, uh, a number of different industries. So how long will a machine like this last uh, in its current state before it either has to be refurbished or replaced? 
electronics today are the are the what the driving factor on being refurbished, and I would say 10 to 12 years would be a good day. And and again, the size of this is as this comes in. I mean, how much does this weigh? This machine weighs around 550,000 pounds. And the, and the gear itself? The gear weighs around 30,000 pounds. 30,000 pounds. So that's not something you're just easily moving around no. and getting the gear in place. In particular, as you're, you're distributing your product, you're sending it around. I mean, do, you, you go, do you, these, these go out by truck? Do they go out by rail? Obviously, if they're going overseas, right. are they going by boat? Are they going by plane or all the above? All right. So a lot of our product does go to the ports, either in Houston or up on the East Coast. Um, all of our product currently is leaving by truck. Uh, we have deployed, we have actually used trains, we've used uh, barge traffic as well, um, but most of the product that we send goes out by truck. So, uh, as, as just, just briefly, as to wrap up, how many people are actually employed here? 80. 80 people are employed here. Yeah. In terms, and, and those skills will range from what to what would be there? So we have salesmen that are out in the field. Okay. Uh, we have salesmen in South Africa. We have salesmen in Australia, Canada, all over the U.S. Uh, as far as the staff here, we have people that run the machines. We have a welding department. We have a machining department. We have an engineering staff, an accounting staff, uh, obviously administrative staff, and then upper management. Well, and, and I assume that your staff has to be attuned to what's happening around the world. Oh, sure. are, are, you, are you seeing what is occurring within uh, sort of a resurgence of the American economy? Has that been right. beneficial to your company as well? It, it has. Uh, we, we have a lot of customers that actually are dictating that they want USA made products on their purchase orders. So that helps us because that makes us more competitive because we use US materials, but some of our competition don't always use US materials. So that actually puts us in the same arena with them as far as the competitive nature of the, of the product because I can buy products cheaper in, in other parts of the world, but they're not the same quality that we can source here in the U.S. So, well, we want to thank you for being a part of Southwest Indiana, in particular being fifth generation in Southwest Indiana and Indiana's great Southwest. Thank you. Hit the like button below and click to subscribe to our channel so you can receive the latest videos from Indiana's Great Southwest.